Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Keith Gebhardt with Learn Tech Training and in this video we're going to discuss how to configure voice over IP phones on our networks, okay? Now this will be a simple method just to get you familiar with the commands and get your phones actually communicating together easily. Now here you can see we're using three different IP phones and three different computers, a very, very simple and basic topology we have here. But you can see if I go ahead and dial the phone extension I gave this phone over here on the right, 1030, 1030, and just pick up the phone to call it, it rings without any issue. So we could go ahead and either answer that phone and we could see it's connected, and then we could hang it up. Okay, so this is exactly what we're going to be doing. You can see we're going to be adding um, some different VLANs. We're going to be configuring a DHCP pool for our data and voice VLANs. And then we're going to be adding our telephony services as well. So without anything else said, let's go ahead and open up a new Packet Tracer Lab. And I need you to go ahead and grab a 2811 router, a 2960 switch, three IP phones, and three PCs. Make sure your PCs are all set to uh, DHCP because, again, we will be accessing these computers or getting our IP addresses dynamically on these PCs as well. Now once we do that, we can go ahead and connect our devices together and each device is going to get connected using a straight through cable. Just remember when you connect to the phones, you need to use from the PC to the phone in the PC port and that's for all of them. So we will go ahead and plug this into the PC port on that phone and then again PC to the PC port on this phone as well. Now, the other port available on the, on the phones is the switch port. So we will take the switch port and plug it into port 2 on the switch. We will take this phone and plug it into port 3 on the switch. And we will take the far right phone and plug him into port 4 on the switch. Now, our connection from our router down to our switch, we will use port 00 on the router to port 1 on the switch, just to make it nice and easy. Next thing we need to do is we need to power on each one of these phones. To do that, we just click the phone and you will see an image of the back of the phone here. Just simply grab the power connector and plug it into the power port on the back of the phone. And once it does that, it will stay in place for you. You will notice the link lights change to amber and green and they will all start gaining a connection as it powers on. We need to do that for all three phones. And once we're done this, we could go ahead and start configuring our VLANs on our switch. So let's go into our switch here, CLI, and let's get into global configuration mode, conf T. We need to create VLAN 10 and name that data. We're going to create VLAN 20, name that uh, voice. We're going to create VLAN 30. We can name that management and uh, just do MGT for short. VLAN 40, I like to make what's called a miscellaneous VLAN where I throw all unused ports in this miscellaneous VLAN, just helps add a bit of security. And then VLAN 50, we will name this our native VLAN, okay? So let's go ahead and do interface FA01. And we're going to do a switch port mode trunk and switch port uh, native VLAN 50. We could go ahead and exit that interface. Interface FA02 through 4. Oh, interface range, I'm sorry. Interface range FA02 through 4. And that's going to be a switch port mode access switch port access VLAN 10. Now these are for the computers, right? Accessing VLAN 10 is our data network. But we also have to do what's called switch port voice VLAN 20. That way it knows that there's two VLANs and our voice VLAN since it's going through the phone is gonna be on VLAN 20. Now once we're done that, we could go ahead and move all the unused ports to what? Our miscellaneous VLAN. So let's go ahead and exit this interface. Let's do interface range FA0 uh, FA0 slash 5 through 24 switch port mode access. That way they don't somehow uh, obtain a trunking status if someone plugs something into them. And then we're going to do switch port access VLAN 40 for miscellaneous. And I'm going to shut them down just so we know they're not being used. And since this is a 2960 switch, we do have two gigabit ethernet ports. So we're gonna do interface range, gigabit zero slash one through two. And we could do switch port uh, mode access once again, and switch port access VLAN 40. And then we will also do a shutdown on those as well. So let's go ahead and end of this, go back to privilege mode and show VLAN brief to see what we have configured on this switch so far. And so far, everything looks good. All these ports are turned off, and I know that we could also do a show IP interface brief 
just to verify and we can see they're all manually shut down but we also see that port one is still in default which is not recommended but we know it's going to be trunking so we'll just leave that there and then we also know two three and four are in our data vlan but it's also told to use these for vlan 20 for voice so right now i'm just going to do copy running config uh, copy running config startup config to save this and we are good on the switch let's go ahead and go into our router and configure our sub interfaces on our physical interface. So when we get the dialog message, we're going to say no, get into global configuration mode, and we need to do interface FA 0 size 0 0.10 for VLAN 10. We're going to encapsulate that using dot one Q, say 10 for the VLAN ID, IP address 192.168.10.1255255255.0. Exit that. We're going to do interface FA 0 slash 0 0.20, and cap dot one q and 20 for the vlan id ip address 192.168.20.1255255255.0 and then we're also going to do interface fa 0 size 0 0.50 encapsulation dot one q 50 and native okay so we can exit that we're going to do interface fa 0 size 0 no shutdown because by default it is shut down and now we need to set up our dhcp pool so let's exit this and let's do our excluded addresses. So IP DHCP excluded address. And we're going to do 192.168.10.1 to 192.168.10.5 just to keep it simple. Here I'm just going to hit the up arrow and we're going to change this to 20. And we're going to change this guy to 20 as well. Now remember, we have two different VLANs communicating. We have our uh, data VLAN for our computers and our voice VLAN for our phones. So that's what we're doing here. We're creating two pools, one for our data lines, right, our data VLAN, and the other for our uh, IP phones here. So once we do that, we need to actually set up the IP DHCP pool. And the first one I'm going to name data and just set uh, name it 10 also in data 10 that way we know it's for VLAN 10 and we need to set the network address and for this one it's 192.168.10.0 with a class C subnet mask 255.255.255.0 and we also need to give it a default router now the default router is essentially the default gateway so it's going to be 192.168.10.1 and that's good now we need to create the second DHCP pool for our voice network so IP DHCP and it's going to be pool, and I'm going to name it voice20 for the VLAN 20. Again, we need to give it a network address of 192.168.20.0.255.255.255.0. And a default router, which is 192.168.20.1. And here we also got to tell it an option. Now, the option is, again, what we use to pull uh, the configuration files down to the phones. So 150 allows us to pull from all available servers, and option 66 allows us to use a single TFTP server. But we're just going to stick with 150 and keep her simple, okay? Now, once we do that, we also have to give it the IP address, 150. And IP address is going to be 192.168.20.1. And I messed that up. Let me just hit the up arrow and put a zero here, not an O. There we go. And once that's done, we could go ahead and exit this mode. And now we need to configure the telephony services. So just type in telephony, telephony, <laughs> mismatch there with my words, tongue twister. All right, telephony service, hit enter. Now we need to set the maximum directory number to three since we have three phones. And we're going to set the maximum e phones to three since we have three phones again. IP source address is going to be 192.168.20.1 and a port number of 2000 okay so we can go ahead and now go into ephone directory number one and give that a phone number of uh, number 1010 will be the extension hit enter we could go up and change that to two hit enter and change the number to 20 and now we can go to three enter and go up and change the number to 30 okay now once that's done we could exit that and we could go into ephone one and we're going to do type which is the phone type and then cisco packet tracer all we have is 7960 and then we're also going to do a button one and line one okay next we're going to do ephone uh phone two type 7960 and button one one dash two let me type that in, button 1-2. And then we're going to do ePhone 3. And it's going to be type, again, 7960, button 
uh, 1-3. And those will come up here in a second. And it said incomplete command for who? Um, oh, I think it's it should be good. It should be good. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and end this. We're going to do a copy running config, startup config. And you guys should save this so you have it for reference, okay? And let's go ahead and take a look at our phone. So we're going to pull up this phone, go to the GUI. Here we can see it got address to 10.10 .10 extension. And if I open up this phone here, go to the GUI, he got the 20 extension for some reason. What does this phone get? He got the 30. So it doesn't really matter. It just depends on when the lease is requesting for an extension, right? So let me open up this phone here, and let's just type in 10, 20, because I want to call that extension. And if I pick up the phone, it's ringing. Hang it up. So it is good. Everything is good. And again, our computers can still communicate to each other. These are on the same subnet, right? We didn't create multiple subnets for the computers, which you can do. You can mess around with that and do that as well. But the reason why we had to use a trunk port here is because we have two VLANs. We have VLAN 20 for our voice network and VLAN 10 for our computer network. So they needed to be able to communicate to each other. So I hope you found this very helpful. Again, please do not forget to subscribe and like this video. If you have any questions or concerns, please drop me a comment and I'll respond to you whenever I have a free chance to do so. I will see you guys later.